Breaking news on CBS Sports HQ. The Cleveland Browns are bringing back Jadavion Clowney. Our insider Jocena Anderson reporting the deal is for one year worth up to $11 million. Clowney enjoyed a bounce back season for Cleveland last year with nine sacks in 14 starts. Was looking for a little bit more in terms of free agency, perhaps more years, perhaps more money. But it didn't pan out that way. He settles on a one year deal with the Browns for up to $11 million. As you take a look at his numbers since leaving the Houston Texans, 12 sacks in 2019 to 2021. And you see the QB hits, pressures, and forced fumbles. For more on this move, let's now welcome in our Josina Anderson, who joins us via telephone. Josina, how important is this move for the Browns and for Clowney? Well, it's huge when uh, the Browns are looking to fortify not just the offensive side of the ball with the addition of a very important piece in Deshaun Watson at quarterback, but also the defensive side of the ball in um, making sure that Jadavion Clowney not only returns, but that he is opposite uh, Miles Garrett, and each of them equally are able to take pressure off one another as far as the offensive line attention uh, that they both uh, will command as far as shedding blocks and being able to get uh, to the quarterback. Uh, this is also a team that is looking to continue to make strides under uh, defensive coordinator Joe Woods, who actually will be in Atlanta for the league's accelerator program this weekend. Um, but Miles Garrett knows exactly how important Jadavion Clowney is, why he was trying to help uh, recruit him. Uh, Clowney uh, typically, you know, takes his time in making these uh, decisions, but I think it is a very positive thing for Cleveland not only to have him back, but that he, as you mentioned, is coming off of a nine-sack season at the age of uh, 29. Yeah, Clowney and Garrett combining for 25 sacks in 2021, a big part of what Cleveland was able to do on defense. So what type of flexibility does this give the Browns in terms of the development of other players? I mean, they drafted Alex Wright in the third, Isaiah Thomas in the seventh, traded for Winovich with the Patriots. What does this do for the development of those players? Well, first and foremost, anytime you can have uh, game records on, on the defense, to just kind of set the standard with regards to production, particularly as they uh, look to advance and the more important parts of the season and get back, you know, to the playoffs, obviously that's going to set the tone and set the stage. Um, there are times when uh, Joe Woods will rotate uh, Clowney in and out or what have you, just depending on the situation or the duration or how the game is unfolding. But um, any time that you have players of that talent, it's always going to be good with regards to that. I don't think it's going to inhibit um, anyone's development, so to speak. If anything, it will help set the tone for what they're trying to accomplish. Of course, they still have the Baker Mayfield situation to, sh to sort out. Uh, Deshaun Watson said to meet with the league. They've got some other issues on the defensive line. Is there any update on sort of what's going on with Mayfield or any other moves that the Browns might be looking to make? Everything is, uh, for what I know right now, um, is holding pat. And, you know, it's not for a lack of the Browns being willing, obviously, to uh, do a deal for Baker Mayfield. It really is just reflective, at least from Cleveland's perspective, of his pedigree. He's a former number one overall, and you cannot just give him up for free, no matter how teams perceive the situation and feeling like at some point he does have to go. And that is true. But as I've been reporting uh, since the owners' meetings, uh, the Browns are budgeted for Baker Mayfield to be on that roster. Uh, if everyone recalls, even though Deshaun Watson is on a five-year, $230 million deal, his 2020 compensation is $1,035 million. Jacoby Brissett is only making, uh, you know, relative, obviously in football terms, one year uh, up to $4 million. So uh, when you look at Baker Mayfield being on that 18.858 fifth-year option, they have the money uh, to budget for Baker Mayfield being on there. The question is, you know, um, when when will he go? And one of the things that I have been underlining is that while people continue to say that Cleveland has no leverage, leverage is a fluid concept. Leverage can change second to second, day to day. And as these teams, similar to Cleveland, 
uh, offense returning from Bahamas and getting ready for OTAs coming into next week um, and, and upcoming, um, you never know what can happen at these practices. You never know um, as we get closer to training camp um, and you see how things unfold, what will happen. And so leverage can change in a blink of an eye. So the Browns, as I understand, are prepared to wait and are waiting. Lastly, what I would say to that, too, is that while people continue to make this about money and saying there are teams who, you know, are fighting about how what portion of his $18.85 million that they'd be on the hook for if he comes to that team, it is about money, but it's not about money. And the reason why I say that is because, just quickly, for example, if he were to go to Carolina, by example, Sam Darnold is making the same amount of money that Baker Mayfield is which is 18.85. Obviously, Baker's not on that roster. But you have Sam Darnold and you have Sam Corral at a third uh, round compensation level that he was drafted at this past season. Those salaries combined maybe get you to around, um, you know, what Jimmy Garoppolo uh, is making or what have you. And that's not a lot of money. That's just one person. When you put it in the context of the fact that quarterbacks are commanding upward of $45 million a year. If you have a player, which is what I'm sure the Cleveland Browns are underlining to teams, that you're trading for to be your starter, $18 million is not a lot. And just to get back to what I was saying about Jimmy Garoppolo, what I meant to say was as far as that Jimmy Garoppolo is, if you, bring, uh, if you, if you were to bring Baker on, with Sam Darnold on the roster, and even if Carolina were paying half, that's $9 million plus the 18 that Sam Darnold has, right, which gets you about 27 ish 28 That's only $3 million more than Jimmy Garoppolo. That's what I meant to say. And obviously Jimmy Garoppolo is on the 49ers team with other, you know, with Trey, with Trey and, all that, what it was, and all that other stuff. That money combined is not a lot when you're considering what a starter is commanding. So that's why it is, but it isn't. What this has to do with more is about principle and philosophy of the other teams feeling like what they're willing to pay, given they feel that the Browns have to get rid of them. But the money in and of itself is really not a lot. And both Carolina and Seattle and any other team potentially um, can make it happen if they want to. And as you said, things can move very quickly as they get set for OTAs coming up next week. She is our NFL insider, Jocena Anderson, joining us to discuss the signing of Jadavion Clowney by the Cleveland Browns, a one-year deal worth up to $11 million, as well as giving us the Baker Mayfield update. For your daily fix from the NFL, you can check out the Pick 6 podcast. Will Brinson and all the super friends keeping you up to date on everything that's going on in the league. They'll certainly discuss the Clowney situation and how that helps this Browns defense in what is expected to be a tough AFC North heading into the 2022 season. Download and follow the Pick 6 podcast wherever you get your podcast audio. You can also watch the pod on YouTube. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.